Good. Welcome everybody tonight to uh, the second webinar uh, for Math for Success, which I'm going to be sharing the uh, research-based activity for subitizing known as Dot Flash. I would like to share with you that we've been at our technology here from about six o'clock and we are experiencing a little bit of technical difficulties. So if there is an issue, please um, type in on the screen. Shauna is here and she'll see that immediately and help you out. And we had, had planned a little bit different in how we wanted to deliver this tonight, but again, with some troubles, it's learning for us as we're just getting started and it's not the way we wanted it to go, but we are delivering it the best we can. So welcome to all seven of you that have registered tonight and I hope you uh, just kind of sit back, relax, listen, enjoy. If you have any comments or questions, type those in and Shauna will let me know at any point. I'd also like to welcome my colleague back, uh, Mary Schatz. She has been helping me out and uh, giving me great advice along the way on my new journey of this new website and activities that I am uh, working on. And she is going to be my student in this tonight. So I'm just going to start with a little bit of the housekeeping and then I'm going to get into sharing uh, the activity with you and show you that how it is implemented with students in the classroom from kindergarten through grade six and probably even beyond as I do it with adults. And I think our minds work a little bit differently and sometimes as adults we're not really subitizing. First of all, I'd like to share with you what subitizing actually is and a little bit of the research uh, behind it. What subitizing, well they say the actual way to say it is subitizing and I just say subitizing and it's the ability to recognize a collection at a glance, not a count, it's at a glance. And um, what I find really interesting about subitizing is that it has just came into the revisions of the curriculum back in 2007 and my hope is that it will not be removed as we look at new a new revision come 2018 as it is vital to the enhancement of students number sense and I find again I find it interesting because I have uh, written my capping paper and the research dates back into the 1940s about the importance of subitizing with students from a very young age of three and four years old. So that's just a little bit about it. Also, just a couple of more things with regards to subitizing. They say that if we subitize with our young students, if we take five minutes a day, subitizing we are vastly improving and increasing their number sense and and that is vital to almost the entire primary curriculum and of course benefits the later elementary years so we need to look at that as well when i flash you um, these dots i want to stress as well that the research states that uh, using pictures fancy pictures of cows horses dogs as they have done in the past or whatever it may be is actually a detriment to student learning and they don't really indicate why but they do say it is and so I want you to really be mindful of that. I use my smart board and um, for my I create my uh, dot patterns on the on the smart board using smart notebook but you can also use a uh, small uh, dinner plates uh, or paper plates and uh, stickers and with that this will be seen right there will it not so you can use the smaller plates as well as the bigger plates so you can uh, that can be used as well and I know that our kindergarten and grade one teachers do a lot of their supervising on plates versus the smart board and one last thing as well and I will share a little bit more at the end um, I will have printables um, dot plates or dot printable dot flash patterns and smart board files on sale as of March the 1st and you'll be able to uh, purchase those off of my website as well as Teachers Pay Teachers. So let's begin. You are here to uh, learn about the re first research-based activity in which I call dot flash and I want you to know that this is not uh, my own activity. I have created modifications and variations through my own learning over the last few years, but this is actually research-based. 
So it is, uh, the way this works is that I have a collection of dots and I flash it three times to my students. And again, I'm going to stress the word flash because I want the students to be able to recognize these collections at a glance and not have a count. I'm just going to backtrack here one more time. There's so much to share in a very little bit of time here in half an hour, but that research behind it is important. And there is a sequence in which the dot patterns do have to be arranged. And that is, they say, to start with um, eraser matrices, which I will point out as I go to show you that. And then they say to go to linear patterns and then dice patterns and then actually scramble the arrangements. And in my latest reading, uh, as from Dan Finkel from Math for Love, that I have uh, put a lot of, of about his work on, onto my blogs, he had talked about circular patterns, which I find very interesting. And those are things that I want to try as well. So just that that as well as I wanted to share with you. So let's begin with dot flash and I'm going to have Mary be my student here so you're going to hear her voice and you may see her up at the front here with me at times. As I said my screen is up and I am going to give three flashes but it is important that the students know that they've got a task at every flash and on the first flash we just want them to visualize. Okay, Nothing more but visualize and to look at what that arrangement actually looks like and that's all we want them to do. On the second flash we want them to look for small groups because as I forgot to mention that subitizing is actually um, a simple definition for it is part part whole relationship. Okay, That's what it actually is so there's small groups within the large group. And on the third flash, we want them to quantify. And quantify is just a big word for add, and we want them to find the sum or the total. And it is important that we use this terminology even with our, if our young kids at kindergarten level. I know that our teachers do that here. And we have to know that mathematics is a language, and that vocabulary that we use is pertinent to their uh, success as they move through uh, their, their years in school. So we are going to start, and Mary, you're going to help me out here. So you're going to get how many flashes, Mary? Three flashes. What are you going to do on the first flash? Uh, visualize. I'm going to try and see what, how, how it's arranged. What are you going to do on the second flash? I'm going to look for the small groups. And on the third flash? I'm going to, um, from those small groups, put them together and find a sum or quantify it. Okay, and then I do want you to, I always say to the students too, is you keep that in your head till I ask you how many there are because our, our kids do want to blurt out and that's important that there's no talk till after that third flash. So here is the first flash you're going to visualize. Okay. Okay, that would be considered to be a scrambled arrangement. Yeah. Okay, I'm just letting those people know that are viewing. Okay, second flash, you're looking for those small groups. Right. Okay, and your third and final flash, you're going to quantify, find that sum or the total and have that in your head. Okay. It changes colors. It does change color pretty fancy. It's magical. Okay. So what I do in my classroom too is I just go around my class and they whisper to me in their ear what they, their total or their sum and or they have it right, I have them write it down in their scribbler and I also say to them that there is only three flashes, that's important, I'm just going to backtrack there again. And I always say, if you don't get everything on the third flash, you quantify what you what you saw. And then when I put the screen down, you'll see what you've missed or what you've made a mistake on, and it's okay. Okay, and that's important. So, Mary, how many did you see? Until I saw five. You saw five, okay. And can you tell us how, can you just come up here, Mary, so we can hear you in the mic? And I don't put down the screen because what happens, and this is again really important, if I put down the screen or if I hold up the, the plate, if I'm using plates and I hold up the plates, what the students will do is just start making up uh, patterns that they've seen. And we don't want them to do that because it is important for them to tell us what they saw on the flash. So 
keep that in mind because that is important. Mary, can you explain to us and share with us how you saw that five? I saw a group of three and a group of two. And how did you quantify that? Three plus two. But how did you know three plus two is five? How did I know that? Yes. Because I had an amazing mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so okay. I found, um, well, how, um, I added them together. But, I added those three dots and added the two. But dots. did you count on from three to oh, more? I see what you're uh, did you break apart three? Did you? What yes, was your... I counted on from three. Uh, I can't. Yes, I counted two on from the three that I originally saw. So I kind of saw three together, and then I added the two on. Okay. That work. So Mary, if I take this down, can you circle for us those groups of the three and the two that you saw? So this three and this group of two. Okay. Awesome. And is there a um, number equation that you can write for us that matches those groups that you saw? You can get into that with students as well. That doesn't have to come right away. I'm trying to show you the basics as well as just some extension as well. And the idea that why I was asking you, Mary, uh, how you uh, quantified this mm -hmm. is we're looking for that arithmetic fluency. Yeah. Because what's happening is that we're decomposing and composing number. So I was looking for if you actually knew that that three could be a two and a one, mm -hmm. you're making a double plus one. Right. So that's yes. where we're working. That's why I want that communication with those students. Yeah. as well to be able to show me that and explain that to me. We want to know why and what they're thinking and okay. doing. Okay? Sure. So that's linear. I'm just going to do the next one, maybe. Can you okay. get me the next one? Okay. Would it be the next one? Um, oh, there we go. So we'll go through another one here, Mary. Okay, okay, we're going to go through, and again, how many flashes? Three flashes. What are you going to do on the first flash? Visualize. On the second flash? See the groups, small groups. And on the third flash? Quantify that. Okay, so quantify, which is a big word for add, and it's finding that sum or that total. total. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first flash. And that, to those of you who are viewing, that would be considered to be a linear arrangement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Second flash. Okay. And third and final flash. Yep. Okay. Okay. How many did you see, Mary? I saw seven in total. Okay. You saw seven in total. Now, I would like you, I'm just going to leave the screen down. I'd like you to just come up to the front here and can you show us? The number that you saw on your fingers, please. Okay. The total number of the collection, but show us using okay. your fingers. A group okay. of four on top and a group of three on the bottom. Okay. So you saw a four and a three. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to bring the screen down yet, Mary. I'm, I'm going to say, okay, you saw it as a, you broke it apart and decomposed that arrangement of seven as a four and a three. That's how you saw it. Mm -hmm. Is that the only way that you can make seven as a four and a three? No, I could do three and three and one. Okay. So can you show us that on your fingers? <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have enough hands, but a, a group of three and a group of three and then a group of one. What it's interesting because what students will do, even they'll start putting fingers down and oh, they'll start, they'll show the say three, three, and they're able to, they're how, they're more flexible than me. Right? Okay, so they would say so, like three and three and one. Right. Oh my gosh. Okay. okay. And they will. Mm -hmm. And when I get over 10, I actually have students grouped together. They absolutely love it. Sometimes they ask me if they can take their shoes off. And I say, no, no, no. <laughs> We're just using our fingers. Mm -hmm. But the idea that we can go above 20. Yeah. But those finger patterns are hugely important. Mm -hmm. Van der Waal and Levin talk about finger patterns, using finger patterns to be able to decompose and compose number and understand that. Because we want to know that seven is made from all the different points, parts. Yes. There's four and three and five and two and seven. one and seven one, seven units of one and a six and one. 
And that leads again to basic fact fluency. Hmm. Right. With basic fact and greater number fluency, which I will share here just in a minute. So, okay. and so sometimes what I would do, well, so yeah. Mary, do you want to do you want to circle the four and the three that you saw? And so the four on the top, because I'm looking for groups, and that was the. I, I like to tell my groups find a find, you know, the biggest group, and then, because to me visually, I'm looking for a big group that makes sense to me. You mean the group with the greatest, the greatest number, quantity, yeah. the greatest mm -hmm. quantity. Yeah. Okay. The vocabulary. So when you look at the parts, you're seeing it as a four and a three in parts. Yes. And you just told me that you can see, you also know that seven could be made from three, three, and one. Could yeah. you give me some other parts of seven? Well, a five. Can and you two. write me some other parts of seven? Mm -hmm. A five and a two. Mm -hmm. A one and a six. The word needs to be... Um, Oriented yeah. a little bit. Oriented a little That's bit. Okay. Or seven ones. Two, four, six. Oop, one more. Okay. So the idea again that what dot flash leads to or subitizing and, and what we can lead into is that decomposing of numbers so then they can compose number. Mm -hmm. So if they have, if so if I was to go with a basic fact. So this is where this leads to us for basic fact fluency. Because if I have 5 plus 7, my students should automatically, if they know how to decompose 7, they're breaking this up as a 5 and a 2, 5 and 5 is 10, making a friendly, and 2 more is 12. And that should be as quick as can be. That then leads for us into strings of numbers. Then I break this apart as a 5 and a 2, that's 22, and working on strings of numbers which then even leads us into further with, I could pick any number. Uh, okay, well, I'll just change this here. Okay, mm -hmm. so they automatically know I'll take two, I'll make 50 and I've got 55. Right. And that's the whole idea. If they can decompose and compose number from one to 10, they are going to have a, a great deal of success with arithmetic with fluency as they go through that. So that's another avenue to take through dot flash. We start off really simple as I showed in just the first, uh, with the first slide. And this is a little bit further than you can take it into the second slide. And I will show you one more here. And so then in your, when you're talking about the stages that you're going through, um, the first one had been arrays or matrixes so um, that would be even before some of this, would it? Or Yes, I throw in, at a grade three level, I throw in a variety. I throw in a variety right from the start because I believe that we, they have seen uh, a lot of those arrays or matrices as they're coming right. in from grade one, yeah. kindergarten, grade one, and grade two. Okay. So I throw a variety at them. But that's the sequencing in which they say is the best learning opportunities for students. Do I say go in that specific order? Or are you going to actually put a detriment to their learning if you take away no. or move away from that sequence? No, you're not. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's actually really interesting. We think that kids should recognize dice patterns automatically, but they actually really don't. And it's, and it's actually quite, you know, when you look at it, how many kids now do sit and play dice games or board games at home with their family? It's, which they haven't, they come into pre-K, and I know I talk to our pre-K teachers, and many of them have not even seen a dice no. or at a kindergarten level. So yeah. that is, and it's interesting that that's not first in sequence as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we're going to go to the next slide. Great question, Mary. I'm just going to go to the next slide. And again, I'm going to just show another uh, opportunity in which okay. to extend their learning from on that. So I'm just going to take you through again. How many flashes? Three flashes. And every time I have done this with my students, it's um, we're at 100 days of school. And I've done it probably 95 times. And no matter every time I do it, I go through how many flashes. What do we do on the yep. first flash? What do we do on the second flash? Yep. What do we do on the third flash? Yep. And they need that every time. 
Okay, so what are you going to do on the first flash, Mary? Just visualize, see, okay. just see what's there. Yeah, it's looking at that arrangement. How yeah. is it arranged, okay? So there's your whoop, yeah. first flash. Okay. Okay, that is an array or a matrix. And my kids learn to understand that. I don't tell them what it is. They learn to understand that it actually is set up in equal rows yeah. and equal columns. Right. They have to come up with that connection. Okay. And that's that's important. Mm -hmm. Okay. And second flash, what are you going to do? Looking for the groups. Okay. This is just magical how it is changing color. <laughs> I feel like I'm standing at a different yeah. smart board each time I flash it. Mm -hmm. And what are you going to do on the third Quantify. flash? Quantify, which is a big word for uh, finding the sum, yes. adding them all together. And again, our kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Waldy, she uses that terminology yeah. with those mm -hmm. students. It's important that you do. Okay, third and final flash. Okay, and how many did you see in that collection, Mary? Eight in total. And can you tell me, before I put that screen down, how you saw that eight? Four groups of two. Is there another way that you two can groups see that? Of four. Okay. Yep. So, what I do, again, I don't start with this learning, but in grade three by October, I already get into where we 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 yeah. recognize those groups. Yeah. Okay. At, in the rows, and I actually get into repeated addition. Right. That's my October, and then I would go. So they look at yeah those groupings and. That repeated addition, and by November, we are then connecting yep. to our multiplication, which we've been working on. What? Not two times eight. Okay. Yep. Two times four, and I've been working on that, and it leads into division. Yeah. Okay. And then again, there's going to be video clips uh, throughout the month of March sharing different ways, again, how to extend on this because this is uh, unbelievably uh, crucial to later uh, multiplication in the teens digits, again, the fluency and greater number multiplication and just understanding those basic facts. So it is incredible. These activities, you can almost cover the entire primary curriculum, and it leads into later elementary mathematics. But to start off with that simple just dot flash in which they're recognizing those collections, and in kindergarten it's to work on that fiveness, in grade one it's tenness, and in grade two it's up to twentyness, and we should be able to go beyond. But they need to recognize a variety of collections, you may see eight this way, but that's not the only way they should be able to see eight. Eight has to be in many different dot pattern uh, dot patterns uh, arrangements. So really keep that in mind because if they're only recognizing eight as this arrangement, uh, that's not again beneficial to their learning. Right. Okay, so they they may need to see eight where it's two groups of eight or it's a group it's a five as a dice Six pattern, two, or, yeah. as three, and all that as well. And again, you can do finger patterns with this. So just that idea of dot flash, and that's what I start off with in the year, and I recommend, and I know that even kindergarten grade one, um, she's just getting into the new activity called reproduce, but I spend my uh, September, October, November just with dot flash because it is amazing how many how many avenues you can take and how many areas that you actually delve and trickle into so through this activity. So wouldn't do till a couple months? No, reproduce, yeah. I probably just started it in December. Okay. And I will be uh, recording webinars on the other research-based activities, which is reproduce, uh, matching hidden patterns in five and frame ten tell about, as well as working with money through subitizing because those are absolutely just incredible um, yeah. ways to continue to enhance number sense for students. But this is one that I just recommend to start with for sure, and it leads into many different learning opportunities and uh, great books and great resources to uh, get a hold of in terms of of. Uh, where you can get uh, things to duplicate or master copies of things is Coming to Know Number by Grayson Wheatley. 
Um, it's a mathematics activity resource for elementary school teachers. I know that he has a newer edition. And we will put uh, pictures of these on the website uh, later on for you to be able to get a hold of, as well as Vanderwall and Levin teaching student-centered mathematics uh, grades K to three. He talks, there is a section here on subitizing in which actually he shows, um, he shows the dot patterns in within his book. He actually mm -hmm. shows the dot patterns of arrangements of how to start. And he also talks about putting in color uh, to help kids start seeing those parts, so that whole. And he said, people say, do they get, um, do they really look for those colors? No, the colors don't become something that they are uh, concerned about. It just helps them see the parts of the whole. So those are two great resources. And as well, just a reminder that uh, my capping project as I worked through my master's was on subitizing and I have done a, a, a great deal of work with that. Um, and it's a professional resource that I have created. And it is um, the benefits of subitizing, helping early childhood educators that you can, it can be purchased off of my website. It's $25 plus the GST, in which all those research-based activities are included in with all the modifications and variations. So that is my webinar for this evening on uh, dot flash uh, activity uh, for subitizing. I hope that that was valuable and beneficial. And I thank Shauna, my tech, who is just absolutely amazing, and my most wonderful colleague and helper, Mary Schott. So thank you very much, and I hope you have, have a great evening.